take a look at my first mock draft over on CBSSports.com. Now, this was as of about a week ago, and things are starting to shake up a little bit. Will Alex Saar retain that spot? When I update this next Tuesday, you're going to have to wait and see. Will Donovan Klingen stay at number two? I'm not sure about that one either. I think there could be quite a bit of movement. Nikola Topic, somebody we're going to talk about shortly as well, he could be another one to fall. But as you can see right there, we've got three of the first four picks in that initial mock draft projected to be international players. And I will say that I do continue to expect there to be a big international theme in this year's draft. One other point to know, if this year's number one pick is not from college basketball, this would be the first time in history that two years in a row, you have the top two picks coming from outside of college basketball. It just goes to show the growing international trend in this year's game. So the odds on favorite to go number one right now is Alex Saar. He measured in at just under seven feet tall at the NBA Combine. We are talking about someone who is still just 19 years old. He's got a better than plus four wingspan. He's about 224 pounds originally from France, but played last year with the Perth Wildcats in the NB, N, NBL in Australia, excuse me, where he averaged about nine points, four rebounds, and a block and a half per game. Prior to that, he was an overtime elite next to Scoot Henderson. I'm sorry, not next to Scoot Henderson, next to Amen and Nassar Thompson and some of the others uh, that were in that league. So one of the up-and-coming prospects, and I'll tell you what, if that last name sounds familiar, it's probably because his big brother, Olivier, he played for Wake Forest and Kentucky. Here's what I like about Alex Saar. He's extremely mobile and very fluid at his size. So he's got a ton of potential on the defensive end of the floor. Now, what I've said in the last week or so is my concerns are on the offensive end of the floor because he's a little lean. He doesn't really play through contact, and that impacts him when he's trying to play above the rim as a lob threat or out of the dunker spot. And the jumper's not there yet either. So the offense is very much a work in progress. Does that live up to a number one pick? I thought so a week ago. I'm not sure that I think so anymore, but you can find out for sure on Tuesday when that up updated mock draft hits. The other candidate to go number one is another Frenchman, Zachary Rissache. And what we're talking about with Rissache is a six foot nine big wing who fits a three and D prototype. He's a shooter. He's a defender. He was born in Spain, but he grew up in, in France, and he has played with French national teams and currently plays in the French League with JL Borg, where he's averaged about 10 points and four rebounds per game. Now, the thing people like about Rissache is that in a draft that lacks obvious star power, this guy has got a clear niche on both ends of the floor in the modern NBA because he's a big wing who can shoot the ball and is already a plus defender. If it turns out he's got a little more playmaking than we have than we expect, then all of a sudden his upside could be higher. And that's one of the reasons, in addition to his strong play as of late down the stretch of the French playoffs, that he is getting increased traction to be the number one pick. Now, a third name to know. This guy is not from France, from Serbia. Nikola Topic, a big six foot six point guard, has had a decorated career to this point. Unfortunately, he's out with injury right now, but last summer he was the MVP of the FIBA U18 European Championship. He led Serbia to gold there. He's been playing in the EuroLeague since he was 16 years old. And the things to know about Topic is he has terrific size for a pure point guard at six foot six and a great natural feel for the game. As you can see here, he makes a living getting himself to the paint, and he's just exceptionally crafty. Now, the criticisms of Topic are that he is neither a dynamic athlete or a knockdown shooter. So between that and some of the recent injury history, is he potentially falling in the draft lottery? Again, you got to tune into CBS Sports uh, on Tuesday to find out. But he is certainly a third international prospect that we have our eyes on as a potential lottery pick. Now, Another interesting tidbit heading into this year's draft. We talked about how Saar and Rissache are both from France. There is a third prospect from France who is gaining traction as a potential lottery pick. It would be the first time in history that you had three French players go, not just in the first round, but in the lottery. So potentially a big year for France. To John Saloon, won't turn 19 until August. He is 6'9", 207 pounds with a 7'1 wingspan. He's not quite the polished offensive player that somebody like Reese Ache or Topic is, but I'm going to tell you what an NBA scout told me a couple weeks ago in Chicago. He said, when I look back to that 2013 draft, which was so bad, the one player, 
the best player to come out of that was Giannis Antetokounmpo. And what he had was the best body type and the best motor. This scout said to me, I'm not sure Saloon isn't that guy in this year's draft. Now, do I expect him to go in the top five? No, I don't. Do I expect him to go in the top 10? Maybe. Do I expect him to go in the lottery? Yes, I do. So we are talking about four international prospects, five if you include Modest Buzelis, and three from France who are very likely to be lottery picks. So that is everything you need to know about the biggest international prospects in this year's NBA draft. Remember, we are just over about three weeks away at this point, and it's going to be an exciting one as we uh, we head into draft season. 